Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel this week. How are you all? I hope you're all keeping well. And I'm so sorry there was no video last week. Oh goodness me, we went to Brighton, um, a last minute getaway. And uh, I did film it and I did actually put it on YouTube for about 12 hours and it wasn't popular. So, um, so anyway, I'm back. Thank you. Thanks for staying with me. And thank you too for everybody that commented on the Brighton video. Um, because I've took it down, unfortunately, I'm unable to reply to your comments. Um, but thank you. I did read them all and I appreciated every single one of them. This week we're going to be making a apple crumble tart. Uh, now I'm making it vegan, but of course, as always, you can use dairy substitutes. For this part of the recipe, making the pastry, I'm using the Domestic Gothesses Vegan Bakewell Tart, and I'll post the link down below in the description. So I'm placing the dry ingredients all together in the blender. And then we're going to give it a whiz. We're going to whisk this up until we have the consistency of fine breadcrumbs. Now this is where the magic happens. We're going to put some water in just slowly uh, to form a pastry bowl. So here goes. Now it's going in the fridge. Pastry's ready. It's been in the fridge for half an hour. And usually when I roll pastry out, I like to use some grease proof paper. Uh, I just find it, it's cleaner and it's easier. You know, it helps the pastry not to stick to the surface and you can then easily when it's to shape, you can then put it straight into your tin it just works for me but I've just come to look for my greaseproof paper and somebody has used the last bit and not told me so I'm gonna have to manage without does that happen at your house do people like use things and just don't tell you that it's all gone or is it just our house I don't know never mind Yeah, that'll do nicely. So usually if I had the greaseproof paper, I would just literally roll it over with the greaseproof paper over the rolling pin. Really simple, but this way, this is the old fashioned way where you've got to roll the pastry itself around the rolling pin. This is how my mum does it. Oh, look. <laughs> See, I'm better with greaseproof. Let's have a go. See, this is proving my point. Never mind, we'll get there. So now, so I'm lining it in. This hasn't got to be perfect. It's a good job, really. I don't do perfect. So 
that's it. I'm just going to trim off the sides. I've got a nicer tin than this, but look, part of the bottom's gone missing. I don't know where it's gone. And it has a, a nicer finish, a cleaner finish with the edges. But this pie is just for me and Carl, so it hasn't got to be fancy pants. I'm sure it will taste the same. Right, then I just need to prick the bottom of the pastry. That's it. Right, I'm going to line the bottom of the tart dish with foil because this is going to get baked blind. I'm going to put some baking beads in and then it's going to go into the oven. And I'm sorry I can't tell you how long or the temperature because it's not my recipe but it, I say it will be linked in the description so you can see for yourself there. Three Bramley apples for my pie. I find that's about right for us. I'm not a fan of having too much apple. I'd rather have more crumble because I'm quite greedy, really. I love the crumble and the pastry. I like the apple too. So give them a quick chop. I'm going to be using my own recipe for the crumble, so I'll walk you through it. I've got 200 grams of plain flour into the mixer. 115 grams of butter. I know it's usually half fat to flour, but I like it a little bit more buttery. Put it in there. I'm using golden caster sugar, but I'm sure any sugar would do. So let's see how much I'm going to put in. I don't want it too sweet. So let's go for one and a half teaspoons. So how we go with that. Now let's whiz it up. I'm really pleased with that. Right then, so next, I'm going to put the apples into the um, pastry case. Spread out evenly. And then we're going to sprinkle some sugar on. Making sure to cover all of the apples because they are bramley, so they're not very sweet. bit more okay. 
This is my favourite bit, the crumble. I love it. Making sure to cover all the apple. I've never made this before. I couldn't decide whether to do an apple pie or an apple crumble. So I thought I'm going to do a mix up. I'm going to do both in one. So it'll be interesting to see how it comes out. I'm sure it's not unique, but um, it is to me. Right, so I'm going to put this in the oven now, and this is a guess. I'm going to go for 40 minutes, and I've got the oven on 160, so we'll see how we go, because obviously those apples need to cook through. So it looks quite rustic, doesn't it? But I'm happy with it. that's cooking do you want to come and see my craft room Ooh. okay so this is as far as we've got with the craft room um i th think everybody's seen my dresser in here which i'm delighted with i'm so pleased that i made the decision to move this from downstairs and have it in here um, of course, I've got to get another one now for downstairs. So, yeah, that'll be uh, something for another day. And yesterday, I found a table on Facebook Marketplace. Let's zoom in. Now, I've put it straight in because I couldn't wait, but it does need a good lick of paint. And it came with four farmhouse chairs, which... That, at the moment, that, that horrible yellow pine. But Carl, when he gets a minute, is going to paint them in some nice bright colours. So I've got one there to sit on. I think I need to make a cushion. So yes, I've got another one here, which I decided to put my printer on. I did actually want a table that was longer than this one but it was such a good price. It was a bargain, I couldn't leave it. And I'm really happy with it. So I thought, oh, I can put a chair in the corner and the printer can sit there out the way. Hey, I can't believe it. I'm talking to you from my craft room. I didn't think this day would ever come. I know it's not complete yet, but yeah, it's functioning. That's the main thing. So I'm going to be making a memo board or a pin board. And they were ideas from Tracy and from Sophie a few weeks back. So I'm getting on to it now that my bunny's finished. I can now get on with this. So we've taken some chipboard and we've cut it to approximately 24 inches by 17 inches. So my plan, what I plan to do is, because I've been looking on Pinterest for some ideas and YouTube, so I need to draw some crisscrosses on here and on a, with a black sharpie and then the other way as well to make diamond shapes. Then my plan is, I hope this is going to work. So once I've got my crisscrosses, it's gonna form these diamonds and then on each corner of the diamond, we're going to drill a tiny hole through which will make sense, hopefully, as we get to the end of the project. 
So what I'm going to do is, yeah, draw the crisscrosses, drill. Then there's going to be a layer of wadding that you'd use for quilting on the board, which I'll glue down. And then I'm going to cover it with a piece of fabric. But like last time, I don't know if you've seen my bunny dungarees. I made the fabric from scraps and I've got a big bag of scraps. So let me show you. So this is what I'm talking about. I have this bag. I've got, actually got more as well elsewhere with all these pieces in. So I'm planning on doing what I think is called a hopscotch design, um, using all these pieces. So it's a right mishmash of colours. And yeah, I, oh, I've just got to try and get rid of this fabric because there's no way it's going to landfill. It's going to be used. worked it out and I think I should be able to get 12 6 inch squares making this hopscotch design so I might be a little short on fabric I'm not sure because I've got to allow for the wadding and to be able to fold fabric over the back of this board but if I'm sure that's no problem because I can just sew some extra fabric around the edges so I'm not too worried about that and then instead of using ribbon I've seen a lot of these memo boards being made with ribbon I'm going to use some string and that's because the pattern's going to be really busy anyway and I don't want to be putting any ribbon on top of it, it you know I don't want my eyes going boggly so yeah, I'm just going to use some string, which I think will be a little bit more discreet and show off the pattern of the um, material that I make. So I'm really looking forward to making this. Yeah, and in my craft room too. I feel so lucky. I just need to, I need a lamp. It's a bit dark, isn't it? I need a lamp. Um, but hopefully I'll get one at the end of the week. Okay, I'm going to draw my first line. As you can see, I haven't got a ruler long enough at the minute to do one line, so I've drawn two together. So that's that, that's my middle one done. I've decided to do my crisscrosses at four inches apart. So I'm just marking them out. Hopefully that'll be okay. Right, I'm just drawing the lines up now.
the diamonds are all made now so this is what I was saying at each intersection I'm going to drill through a small hole so at the end when it's all the fabrics on I'll then be able to put the string across and then overlap a piece of thread and pull it through the back so it creates a nice quilted design. I might even put some buttons on actually as well. We'll see, we'll see, see how we go. So yes, I'm going to carry on with this next week. I've really enjoyed making this video today from my craft room. Hope you have too. It's just, yeah, it's just lovely to be able to craft in one place. I can walk away, shut the door and leave everything where it is and it's not bothering anybody. I love it. But I do need some lamps. That's a must. And that coffee machine is a must. Those blinds are a must. And top tip as well today from my friend Dee who suggested a mini ironing board, which you can get from Ikea. I'm so surprised. I didn't know you could get them from there. So that's definitely on my list and I'll get a small little iron as well to go with it, which will be a godsend. Oh, yeah, honestly, I'm easily pleased. I really am. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Next week, hopefully, I will have some fabric made uh, so we can carry on with the next process of this memo board. Hopefully, it will come together really quickly. And yeah, I shall keep you up to date each week with how I'm going. There's still a lot to do in the craft room. There's probably going to be shelves put up and Lots of my what I call old tut, which I like to be surrounded by. But um, yeah, I look forward to showing you all. All right, then, everybody, have a lovely week. Okay, bye. <laughs>